a simple way to be reminded of how important quality decisions are and to be equipped to make quality decisions is just think of a soda. You see them on TV and at the stores all the time. Hi, my name is Sean Oliver, and I'm very excited to be here today. I have a question for you today. How many of you can make better decisions? I know me, myself, I can make better decisions. I found this out through a series of mistakes as well as bad decisions. But something that I found out that I'm gonna share with you today is as simple as this. I didn't wanna get blamed for product placement and so I just got a generic soda. What if I told you that making good decisions is as simple as remembering this soda? What would you say? So let's take a look at it. My story is one after serving 27 years, 10 months and 16 days in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, I learned and I'm still learning how to make quality decisions. And so my efforts there as well as now have been put forth in sharing what I've experienced. When I first became incarcerated, I went to what was called closed custody. And that basically is one level above administrative segregation in prison. And when I arrived there, there was myself and there was one other individual in what was called a day room where men just collect and watch TV and just relax. And he and I were in the day room. And then suddenly two other men entered into that day room. And basically what they did is they proceeded to beat that man up viciously. The officer was just standing outside the bars and I'm looking at it and the gentleman more than fight, he was actually trying to climb through the bars, meaning he had a leg. It was just a physical altercation. I would later find out that their reasoning for doing that, this man had harmed one of their sisters. And so I didn't know that at the time. And so when I'm looking at this, I had a decision to make and my decision was, do I jump in to help him or do I prepare for what's next? And looking at the way he was behaving, I decided to prepare what was going to come up next. And so as they finished and they left him, they looked at me, I stood up and they were like, no, nah, that's not for you. And so this was my welcome to close custody. And then I remained in the day room probably 15 or 20 more minutes and suddenly men began to come through. And in prison culture, generally when you're the new person, just the prisons that I was in, when you're the new person, generally there's going to be a welcoming committee. And what that literally means, they're gonna find out, can you fight or not fight? And if you can't fight, that's a no-no, but that's another lesson. But as I was preparing to fight and I was looking around the day room and I was just pondering who was I gonna say, I wanna fight, a gentleman came up to me on the side and he whispered in my ear and he basically said, bro, we already heard about you. You don't have to do nothing down here. I had a decision to make. And the first point that I want to bring out, I stopped. I stopped my thinking. I stopped my planning. And I began to do this. Does decision have to be made? Meaning when he told me this in my mind, no one said anything to me. Although someone got beat up earlier in the day, I don't have to make a decision to initiate a fight. I can just let it come to me if it's going to come to me. And so the first principle that I took away from that, that I'm sharing with you today, whenever you were faced with a situation, stop. And I literally mean stop. Stop in your thinking, stop in your movement and do the following. Decide right then, is this a decision I have to make? So many times when I was a youngster, because of different circumstances I found myself in as an only child being raised by a single mother, I made decisions that would affect my whole life off of momentary circumstances, off of my mother saying, I don't have enough money to buy those shoes, or no, you're not gonna be able to go there, I don't have the money to do that. When I heard that I made decisions inside of me based off of those circumstances that led me down a path that eventually led me to incarceration all that time. So whenever a decision, even if it's 
man, what am I going to eat today? Just stop. Who's forcing you to make a decision right there at that moment, even if you're at a restaurant or at a drive through Just take a moment and stop and say, I don't have to rush. The next thing you can do when you stop, determine if it's right or wrong, meaning if it's as simple as a choice of foods, if it's not bad concerning you being on a diet or if it's not something that your doctor has told you don't do or that you're allergic to, is the choice that big? So many times when we're making decisions, if we would just stop, we will realize all of the pressure, all of the confusion, all of the doubt is coming because we're trying to move quickly. So when we stop to decide what we're going to do, we need to decide if the decision actually has to be made at this moment. And if it does, what's right and what's wrong? And that's basically based off of the laws or our belief system. It's like if I know it's a criminal act, then I've stopped. And a criminal act will be something like a lot of men get out of prison or a lot of men on probation or parole and their friends will say something like, let's go drink, let's go get high. All they have to do is stop. Well, my stipulations say I shouldn't drink. My stipulations say I shouldn't get high. Then the decision that needs to be made, it's obvious. But let's say it's a work situation where I can work for this company for less money, but they have integrity. They have a good name. Or I can work over here for this company where the money is better, but I know there's a lot of shortcuts. Their name's not that good, but they make money. When I stop and consider these things, that's the first step in making a quality decision. The next step that we need to look at when making a quality decision, we need to consider our options. When I was in that situation on close custody, I considered my options and I skipped to the end result. And I was like, if I beat somebody up, what's next? If I lose the fight, what's next? But if I just remain here and see what's going to come to me and deal with it as it comes to me, is that the wise decision? And that's what I did. And I didn't end up having a fight until a month later. So we consider our options when making sound decisions. Ask yourself these questions. What can I do? Whenever you're deciding something, when I say, what can I do? I'm looking at your abilities. What are your capabilities? Are you able to do it? Are you able to do it well? How do you feel when you do it? Consider your options when you're considering yelling at a coworker. You, you have the strength, you have the freedom, you have the liberty to do it, but what's next? And so the other option is I can walk away or the other option is I can give a soft answer and hope that calms the situation down. So another question we ask when we consider our options is how would I feel? In other words, when I make this decision, am I going to feel guilty? Am I going to feel good? What are the feelings going to be that are attached to the particular options that I'm considering in decision making. Another question would be, is it possible? A lot of times when people are considering options, we'll say something to ourselves that's virtually impossible. It's like, well, I'm not going to make a decision. I'm, I'm just going to get drunk and, and I'll think about it tomorrow. Well, the problem is still going to be there when you're not drunk anymore. Or some people, they, they leave relationships such as marriage or parenting because it was an option. But how do they feel later? Guilt, remorse. And so these are just some of the options that we need to consider when we make decisions. And these are questions that help us to work through the options in our mind. And so far, our questions are when we consider our options concerning making a good decision is, what can I do? Not just do I have the ability to do it, but do I have the strength to do it? How would I feel if I took this option or that option? Is it possible, meaning the option that I'm selecting, is it possible for me 
to do it. Quitting is never an option. Although I said stop before you make a decision, stop does not mean quit. A decision will always be made. Even indecision is a decision. And so when we say, is it possible? Sometimes people come up with a good theory, but it's not practical. If you're considering how you can better the company, but you can't even better your relationship with your one coworker, is it possible that the manager or the higher ups are going to even listen to you? Meaning it's a feasible plan that you have, but first you have to start with your coworker. You have to start with what's going on that you can control and that will open up opportunities for things that seemingly at the beginning you couldn't control, but because of your good decisions, they put you in a position to control it. And so right there, we also wanna look at how would it help others? This is an intrinsic question. Simply put, whenever our decisions help others in a good way, there will always be a residual effect. I'm telling you that when we stop, consider our options and the options that we're considering, they help others. Generally, that's going to be an option that helps you and I. And so the next thing after we've stopped, after we consider our options, then we need to decide. And when we say decide, think with end in mind. So many times, if we will just stop consider our options and decide based upon not just a momentary decision, but let's look at the end, meaning what is the end of this decision? Meaning my decision back in prison where I chose that day to wait to see what would come to me, the end of my decision I had when I considered the options just said, well, somebody will come up to me and try to fight me and I'll still end up fighting. But if no one does come up to me and fight, then I've looked out for my own safety, but I've also looked out for someone else's safety. Oftentimes, if you look and consider where you want to be, where you want the relationship to be, what you want the end result to be, while you're stopping, your options will become clear, most likely, and a lot of the time they'll help others and that makes the decision easy. If I'm dealing with the legal system because I've made bad decisions, then obeying the law, following the stipulations that they have set forth for me, being involved with individuals who are doing the same, that makes a decision whether or not to go out and get drunk or get high or go out and hang out with people who don't care or have my best interests at heart is made easy. But it begins when we stop when we consider the options and then we decide. And finally, we have act, live it. And so just like I began, when every time you look at a soda, and I know everybody might not drink sodas as I've, as I've had different people tell me, but when you consider carbonated water or just a canned drink, I hope that soda comes back to you and you realize what can help me make good quality decisions Every time you look at a can of soda or something similar is I remember when I have to make a decision, I need to stop. I need to consider my options. I need to decide. And ultimately, I need to act. So the next time you go into the grocery store or you're shopping online and you have all these drinks to choose from, stop. Consider your options decide, and then act. I hope this has helped you in some way. Have a wonderful day. To help you guys act, I have listed a few problems that occur when we're practicing soda. What was soda? Before we make decisions, we stop, we consider the options, we decide, and then we act. But what are some problems we can experience during this process? Let's look. Pressure. A lot of times we pressure ourselves that we want to act immediately 
and quickly. And that's just a learned behavior. In this microwave society, everything is, I want it quick, I want it now. But just think for a brief moment, how many bad decisions have you made because you made them quickly? Just something to consider. There is no perfect way to come up with the right decision every time. But this process, this soda option will put you in a good place to make quality decisions. When we're considering our options, what if we have flawed information? Sometimes the information that we have at hand when we're considering our options is flawed. There is no one size fits all answer again. That's why you want to take time and discuss this matter in the groups that we placed you in, because hopefully as you're watching this, you're with some other individuals and you can just think about what does flawed information look like? We only know what we've experienced. And that's one reason that I constantly promote having good relationships with other individuals, because sometimes we have blind spots that we can't see, but other people can help us. Once again, this just puts us in a good position to make quality decisions. When we're deciding, I wrote thinking distortions. An example of a thinking distortion is a statement like this, where everybody's always out just for themselves. That's not an accurate statement. And a lot of times, we don't think about what we think about. Simply put, we spend so much time thinking about our thoughts that we miss, how do I think? And that's something to discuss in your groups also. Just look at how do you think? Do you make statements that are overarching and really not true because that's just a statement a lot of people everybody's always out for themselves things are never going to change these are examples of distorted thinking so whenever we're deciding we have to be careful and aware that we can have distorted thinking so whenever we're using soda whenever we're stopping let's talk about the pressures we feel when we stop whenever we're considering our options while we're in our groups, let's look at flawed information. What does that look like for each individual? And when we are deciding, let's look at thinking distortions. Just take a moment in your group and just think about how you think and see if you can identify a thinking distortion. And finally, when we leave here today or when you get up from in front of the computer, it's time to act. So once again, every time <laughs> you see a soda, think about quality decisions. Stop, options, decide, act. And I'm guaranteeing you'll make better quality decisions than you have up until this moment.